How's it guys, this is Davey FP and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'm going to take you guys through my initial Freer draft for the upcoming Double Game Week 37. So you guys heard that right, the Freer has actually been activated already. I posted on my Twitter page, I think on Sunday evening, to take advantage of those price rises and those price drops, I'll be changing my team accordingly throughout the week. But in this video, I'm going to be giving you guys my initial thoughts, my initial planning, and my initial draft right at the end as we approach that deadline for Game Week 37. Now, the deadline's a little bit of a weird one this week. It's actually going to be on Sunday afternoon. So guys, please make note of that on your calendar or your alarm. What you can do is put my Twitter notifications on or my YouTube notifications for this channel as I'll be doing a deadline stream one hour before the deadline. But in this video, going over my initial draft, as I always do, go over the fixtures first, do a little bit of analysis there, as I always like to do, always say that the fixtures are the bread and butter of any draft, then right at the end of the video, I'll be taking you guys through team by team what players I have included. Now obviously it's not going to be the final draft so please pay attention to the team selection coming up late in the week as Double Game Week 36 is at its halfway point and we still have a whole bunch of fixtures left to play. But all that admin out the way, let's get straight into the video, sit back, relax and let's get straight into it. So going on to the Double Game Week 37 fixtures, the first fixtures that I'm going to look at are going to be the Double Game Week players, a slightly smaller double than the prior Game Week 26, we only have 5 teams actually doubling, and unfortunately the quality of these teams is a little bit lower than the teams in Game Week 36. But that doesn't matter on a free hit, maybe these are smaller teams, they're low owned, the differentials are going to be there, and if they can pull off some good results in Game Week 37, we're going to be absolutely laughing. But I'll start off with one of the teams that actually has pretty good fixtures and pretty good form. It's going to be Aston Villa with two home games against Crystal Palace at home and Burnley at home as well. So two home games for them, but I think in terms of home and away, they've been pretty consistent this FPL season or this Premier League season. So I don't really think this is going to impact them too much. Now in terms of the fixture ratings, I've rated Crystal Palace as a wide fixture. As under Patrick Vera, especially in these latter stages of the season, they've actually been playing pretty well. And therefore I think it's kind of an average fixture. But then in terms of Burnley, have regarded it as a green fixture, as in my opinion, I think Burnley are going down this Premier League season, and therefore they're going to have a couple of losses from now till then. So I'm expecting Aston Villa to perform relatively well in both of these two games, definitely favour that Burnley game, so hopefully Stevie G doesn't rotate too much in that one. We're then going to move on to a team with pretty strong fixtures, it's going to be the Leicester Assets with a lovely game against Watford away in the first game, but then unfortunately they have Chelsea away in the second one. Now in terms of Leicester, what side is actually going to play in these two games? We've seen some massive rotation before and after their exit in that conference league, and therefore I can't really suggest many of these options to actually get. But let's just say Madison is uh, okayed from his injury, currently missed the first game of Game Week 36 through that hip injury. Let's just say he's back to full fitness. I might maybe suggest him for that Watford game, but that Chelsea one away is a little bit tricky. This all depends on where Chelsea are at, if they've secured the top 4 by this game week at 37 fixture. Maybe we won't get many Leicester assets as that will probably be a pretty strong at Chelsea lineup. But this will be a game after the FA Cup final and if that game against Liverpool is quite strenuous, we might see some rotation in the Premier League. But currently can't really recommend any defensive or attacking options from Leicester and therefore it's a void for me. But a team that's definitely not an avoid for most FPL managers and most free hitters is going to be the Everton assets with Brentford at home and also Crystal Palace at home. So yet again, two home games, but now compared to Aston Villa, I would say that these two home games are an advantage for Everton, especially because they're right in the mix of that relegation battle. I think the home fixtures make these two better games, and from an offensive and an attacking point of view, I'm looking at including some assets, but I do think both their fixtures are kind of average. Brentford have shown some resurgence in these latter stages of this Premier League season, and Crystal Palace have been quite a strong side, and therefore I can't really rate any of these fixtures as a good fixture. But nevertheless, two average fixtures makes one good fixture, and therefore I'm willing to play the odds on these Everton assets, as they have looked better from an attacking and a defensive point of view in these prior game weeks. We're then going to move on to the Burnley assets, and I think the only reason that you guys would own these Burnley assets on a free hit is if you do support Burnley, or maybe just have a thing for Vachost, but I think these two fixtures aren't that great, both away games against Spurs and Aston Villa. So I can't even really recommend a defender, maybe a Nick Pope if you want some save points, but I can't see Burnley keeping a clean sheet in either of these two games, and therefore it's an avoid for me. The final team though, it's a little bit of a hard one to kind of predict, we have seen some rotation in that forward line, the defence looks pretty solid, but I still won't be going for many of their options. That team is going to be Crystal Palace with Aston Villa away and also Everton away, so the two games are relatively fine, I just can't really recommend any of the defenders, because they don't really carry that much attacking threat, and their forwards have been rotated slightly, except for maybe a Wilfred Zaha. So I've seen a lot of people going for Mateta, but we saw in game week 36 rotated for Eduard. We also have Benteke in the wings. So I think maybe one of the wingers will be safer. It's just which one to go for. But as you guys can see, my initial talking points about the game week 37 doubles, not the best of teams yet, but some good fixtures on paper. And therefore, I hope 
these players that manage to live up to the mark on Alfred. But the next set of fixtures that I want to talk about are going to be the single game week fixtures and I want to highlight the top five teams in the current Premier League table. Now the reason I want to highlight these is that most of these sides have something to play for. We have Chelsea, Spurs, Arsenal are competing in that top four race. We have Man City and Liverpool still in the title race. However, I do think City will go on and win the title with that three point gap. So we might see Liverpool rotate, but I think for now we can pretty much stay safe and I think most of the starting 11s will be pretty strong. So let's start off with the first team there. First in the Premier League, going to win the title probably for this 21 slash 2022 season and Man City face West Ham away. Now I have rated this fixture as a white one with West Ham exiting the Europa League competition. I do think that starting 11 is going to look pretty strong and if you guys do recall early on this season in those cup competitions, West Ham actually beat City. Now no, I'm not saying that West Ham are going to beat City here. I think this might be quite a close one. Depends on kind of who scores first. If City do score first, I can see them winning comfortably, maybe 2-0, 3-0. But if West Ham do give them a run for their money, I think this game could be quite closer and I think both teams might score. Now you guys will see in my free draft that I'm actually avoiding the Man City assets. Yes, I might actually bring one in such as a Cancelo or De Bruyne, but currently I'm willing to hedge my bets and I think this will be quite a tough one for Man City and therefore I want to get some other assets on my free it. But at the end of the day, Man City have the potential to win 2-0, 3-0 and if you guys do pick a goal scorer or maybe a Cancelo, there could be quite a lot of points in that. Aside for me, that's actually a little bit hard to predict because they do have that FA Cup final against Chelsea on Saturday. It's going to be the Liverpool assets against Southampton away. Now, the only thing about this fixture is that it's absolutely prime for Liverpool. And I do think they'll win comfortably if they do start that full starting eleven. So Salah, a Trent, maybe even a Luis Diaz if he does start. However, I don't really think he will. I think against Southampton, they have the potential to score quite a few and also keep a clean sheet. So I think in this fixture, I'll still be including a Salah and a Trent, maybe even a Robertson if you think he's going to start. As I mentioned, I'm expecting the Reds to do quite well. We're then going to move on to Chelsea, who currently sit third in the Premier League, looking to wrap up that top four spot. They have Leicester at home, a fixture I think will be quite tough on paper, especially because they are facing Liverpool in that FA Cup final. So like Liverpool, we might see some rotation after that uh, FA Cup final game, but we don't really know what's going to happen there. And I do think if Chelsea beat Leeds in a couple of days' time, there might be some rotation in this Leicester game. We also have had the news about Marcus Alonso fighting with Tuchel at halftime, and therefore he's going to be a player that probably doesn't feature for Chelsea anymore, but a Reese James could still be quite an attractive option. Leicester, though, out of the European competitions, I think they'll field quite a strong side here, and therefore we might see Chelsea concede. The next team is going to be the better one under the North London clubs. Currently, it's going to be Arsenal. Obviously, Arsenal and Spurs face each other in a couple of days' time in that North London derby. But currently, Arsenal have Newcastle away in game week 37. We saw a player like Aniketia have a pretty strong game against Leeds. However, they did dip off after Luke Ayling did get that red card. And that does worry me slightly. However, a side that also worries me slightly is going to be Newcastle away. I currently conceded about 25 shots to Liverpool, 25 shots yesterday in City. So I honestly don't really regard them as a defensive giant anymore. And I think that Arsenal can still do well against them. Now this will probably be the game that I am worried about because I'm not including any Arsenal options on my free And Saka and Niketia could come back to bite me, but I just hope that they don't. I think the only thing I'm hoping for is that this is an away game at St. James's Park. And therefore I just hope that the Newcastle fans rile up that squad and then maybe they can give Arsenal a tough game. Going on to our final team in the top five is going to be Spurs versus Burnley at home. And I honestly do think this matchup is going to be perfect for Spurs. Uh, Harry Kane and Son, I'm expecting them to do quite well. And with that uh, top four race being quite hectic, I do think Spurs will look to take advantage of this fixture. Now, it is a home game for Spurs, and that's why I think it's going to be a great one for them. The only thing that's a little bit of a negative is they are the early kickoff. But don't worry, you're not captaining Son or Kane on our fret. Therefore, we don't have to worry about any captaincy curse. And I am expecting the big hitters to do quite well from that Spurs side. So overall, as you guys can see, some very good fixtures for these top five sides. And therefore, it's going to be quite a task balancing the single game week players and the double game week ones. Now, my advice for you guys on this balance would just be kind of look at your rank. If you're happy with it, maybe go for some single game week players, some big hitters, some high ownership options. But if you are not happy with your rank, go for some more differentials. And that means those double game week players. And now going on to how many of those double game week and those single game week players I've included on my initial draft. I'll be going over it right now, starting off with the bench. But before we get onto the bench, sorry, quickly, I'm just going to talk about the finances here. I could afford this draft with 0.1 in the bank. So if you guys can make some downgrades, try on the bench. But otherwise, you might downgrade one or two departments or maybe shift your formation around. But going on to our bench, I've tried to go for the cheapest bench as possible, but I do think you guys can squeeze about 0.1, 0.2 extra. I've gone for McGovern in goal. He's been in most of our free at draft just because he is 3.9 million and he does come from a side that I won't want to include too many of their assets after they have been relegated. Now in terms of the other goalkeepers, none of them will start, so you just have to hope that your starting goalkeeper does play, but I'm pretty confident ours will. You guys will then notice that I've gone for a 3-4-3 formation, so three forwards in this one. A little bit of surprise there considering how this Premier League season's actually played out, but I have gone for Simikas and Amarty in that back line. 
So Tsimikas might actually feature for Liverpool if they do choose to rotate after that FA Cup game, but in terms of Amati, expect him to not play at all. The only player that I do think will play on our bench is going to be Brownhill. He has Spurs and Villa away, two relatively bad games, but if push comes to shove and he has to come on, has actually scored or assisted in these prior game weeks. But that's enough about the bench. The bench is going to be as cheap as possible, as I always like to say. We want to kind of squeeze as much value into a starting 11 as possible. And with the testing process gone down, I do think we are safe with these starting 11 players. So the first team I'm going to talk about is going to be the team that our goalkeeper does represent. It's going to be the Everton assets. And my choice of Everton triple up, yes, triple up, is going to be Pickford, Gordon and Richarlison. So in my opinion, Pickford and Richarlison are no-brainers there. Gordon's a nice cheap option if you guys want to actually go for him. But what you guys can do if you don't like Pickford, you can go for one of the more outer, more attacking Everton defenders. Now, Richarlison did manage to get an assist on this game week 36 that we're currently in. But he does still have that Watford away game where I'm expecting him to actually perform quite well. With Gordon, you kind of kind of hope that he does start, but I do expect him to play under Frank Lampard as they actually have been winning recently and he has been in the team. The next team we're going to talk about is going to be the Aston Villa assets and yet again, I've gone for a triple up, but my triple up is going to be two defenders and one attacker now. My reasoning for this is that with Coutinho's benching and Buendia's good form, I'm a little bit worried about a full Coutinho spot in that starting 11. And therefore, I'm going for the safety of the more attacking defenders and Ollie Watkins up front. Now, Ollie Watkins, Danny Ings, that's a kind of a tough debate to go for. Their stats are actually pretty similar. XG per 90 minutes played, pretty similar. They just both have to start. And therefore, I do favor Ollie Watkins because I do think he's more guaranteed to get minutes. And then with Luca Dinia's miraculous recovery from that shoulder injury, uh, Gerard said he wasn't going to play for the rest of the season. He's actually back in the starting 11 and performing pretty well alongside Matty Cash. So what I like about these Aston Villa defenders is that they have that attacking threat and that defensive threat. And therefore, I do think they're going to be worth the cash. The next team to talk about is going to be Crystal Palace. And as I've said in the introduction or the fixed analysis, I only will be including Zaha here because their defenders aren't that attacking and the rest of the attack have some rotation risks. Now Zaha does have eight goals from the last 13 appearances since AFCON and therefore a great option to kind of include in that free draft because he does have a high ceiling. But as most people have noted, every time you bring Zaha into your team doesn't perform. I'm just hoping that he plays both games under Patrick Vera and hopefully he will get us some points. An added bonus to Zaha is that he has been on penalties, scored one in game week 36. So hopefully with those tricky players in that forward line can win another one and hopefully Zaha does convert it. But now going on to my last four players for my free draft, it's going to be four single game week players from two teams. The first team is going to be Liverpool, Trent, Salah, kind of no brainers there. I'm just really hoping that these two assets do start. There is some concern after that FA Cup final against Chelsea on Saturday. There might be some injuries from that. So hopefully no injuries are anticipated there and most Salah and Trent both feature. So that's in a way great fixture on paper. I'm hoping for a clean sheet and maybe a Mo Salah Hattie. And the final two players to talk about are going to be Harry Kane and Heung-Min Son from Spurs. A little surprise there, including both of these two assets. But I just think how many game weeks can you guys own both Harry Kane and Son against a Burnley at home side? Son's in great form. Harry Kane, although he's not scoring or assisting that much, still looks to be playing quite well. And therefore, I think Burnley's the perfect game for a Harry Kane type player. Spurs trying to get into that top four clash. Well, we'll see what happens against Arsenal in this midweek. If they look to be playing quite well, we'll include both of them. Otherwise, I could also go for a De Bruyne or maybe downgrade and upgrade some other departments. So overall, guys, this is going to be my initial freer draft. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about it. Post your freer drafts if you are using the chip. If you're not using the chip, want a bit of fun, put your freer draft down below and we can compare. Your draft might actually be better than mine. But I'll be updating you guys later in the week before that Sunday deadline. Please remember it is on Sunday with my team selection. As there's a lot of games still happening in double game week 36, I want to absorb that information and then make my decisions after those games. But this is basically up for you guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you did and subscribe if you're new and subscribed yet. I'll be seeing you guys for loads of content this week. Otherwise, enjoy the footy that's coming up this midweek. But I'm signing off. It's been Davey FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.